Hello everyone. I want to show you my Zyrus, the Writhing Storm build. Now he's a 3-5 with flying. Whenever an opponent draws a card, except for the first one, they draw in each of their draw steps. Create a 1-1 one, one green snake creature token. When Zyrus, the Writhing Storm, deals combat damage to a player, you and that player each draw that many cards. Now this deck does everything I love. It draws cards, it makes tokens, and it just has big plays. Now I know like a, a lot of people like to uh, just copy and paste the decks they see, the deck list they see off the internets, and that's fine if that's what you want to do, but I think you need to have a reasoning for why your cards are in there, why each card is in there, and needs to be specific to your play group, the people you play with. Uh, but most of all, it just needs to be fun. Uh, and there's a lot of debate between if you should build Commander with Sizzle or with Steak. And uh, this has a little bit of both. Sizzle meaning it's fun, has big plays, has unique ways to win, and Steak means it can win. Uh, but that's not the main goal uh, in my play group. Uh, when you think about it, you have four people, uh, usually, sometimes three, sometimes six, but usually your typical commander game is four people, and there's a one in four chance you're going to win. So if you're going into every game hoping you win, you're more than likely going to be disappointed, or you're just the best player in your group and everyone else is disappointed. So that's why I like to build my decks to have fun. But I have 36 lands in this deck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Very good looking islands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Very good looking mountains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Very good looking forests. Got a command tower. Terramorphic expanse. Reliquary tavern. Yavamaya Coast, Exotic Orchard, and Breeding Pool. Now obviously there are some better specialty lands that I could be playing. Uh, some I have, some I just don't want to spend the money on. Uh, you really don't need them in this deck, uh, but obviously they help. There's a reason they're expensive. Uh, so let's look through the deck list. Um, first we're going to start with Ramp. Kadama's Reach, Heraldic Banner. Now, what's great about Heraldic Banner is usually I'll choose green for your snake tokens. Uh, it's going to make all your snake tokens two ones, which becomes very strong. Uh, adds a green mana, that's why I had less green, uh, because that's what I always want to choose with this. Uh, so any three mana ramp, you want to have a little extra on it. Uh, Ornithopter of Paradise, I just put this in here because it's really more of a mana fix on top of mana ramp, on top of just a 0-2 flyer to block once your mana is good to go. Uh, and that's always important. Is it Signet? I love the two drops. Any two drop ramp I can get. Command Sphere, I know some people aren't playing this as much anymore, but that draw a card, especially after you can tap it, sometimes comes in big and clutch situations. Simic Signet, and that's kind of what you want, is you want to be able to use your ramp later in the game as well. Uh, Search for Tomorrow, I love anything that's a one drop. Uh, it's gonna get me my commander out. Uh, turn four, and that's, I need my commander out at least by turn four, and then Gruel Signet. So these are my ramp need a lot of ramp in this deck. It's very important to get him out uh, quick and swinging quick. Next thing you need, oh, that's another ramp. Uh, Daubery, Anarch of Bolas. What's important about this ramp, not only does it give your creatures 1-0, which again, having 2-1, 3-1 snakes is really big. It's gonna give you a little bit of ramp here on the plus ones. Yes, it's easier to remove, but the fact that it stops people from countering your commander is really big. 
the minus two is fine for creature removal if you need it. Uh, I have not used that yet. Uh, Sakura Tribe Elder, how can you not have a snake that also ramps you in this deck? Rattleclaw Mystic, I know it's a human shaman, but taps for all the right colors and, you know, sounds snakish, right? Um, Timur Banner, give or take. Sacrifice the draw card is nice, three man is not too great, but it's in the right colors, so just for flavor. Arcane Signet, my favorite ramp out there. Then, of course, the classic Soul Ring. So, lots of ramp. Let's see how much ramp we have here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 ramp. A lot more than most people would play, but so far, it's played beautifully and better than most Zyrus decks I've seen, and I can always use that ramp later because you're always refilling your hand in this deck. Of course, you got to have counter magic, which again, it's going to be refilling your hand. Counter spell is huge. Having that mana fixing is big for this. Uh, Dream Fracture, counter target spell, its controller draws a card. This is big. You want your opponents drawing cards. One, it kind of puts you in their favor. This is sort of a group hug deck. But two, it's going to get you snakes, any extra value. Sublime Epiphany, uh, one of the best. And again, you're going to have that ramp, so you're going to be able to play this. Um, one of the, the best counter spells in this deck, because you can choose as many as you want. Counter target spell, activated or triggered ability, that's huge. Uh, not a lot of magic can stop that. Return target online permanent owner's hand, so it's got some removal. Uh, you get to copy a token target creature you control. This can be big. When I show you the creatures, you'll see why. And then also target player draws a card. If you need to draw a card, that's good for you. If not, get yourself a snake. Arcane Denial. Another great uh, counter spell. This controller may draw up to two cards, and then you draw a card at the beginning of your next upkeep. So now you got more tempting of your uh, opponents to draw cards. Is it Charm? Uh, you can give or, give or take on this one. The draw two, discard two, uh, counter in there, two damage to creature. It's just, it's very versatile and it's on theme. Counter target on creature spell in the gate. Uh, I kind of put it in there because it's pretty, but also two mana counter magic is always good. And I really don't care what creatures you get out for the most part, especially in my play group. Uh, counter target spell draw card, always good. Uh, so that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven counter magics. Always, uh, always needed. And again, you're refilling your hand. You're usually going to have something in hand, and people aren't going to want you to mill them or get a bunch of snakes out, or they're going to want to kill you once you do. Uh, here's some removal. Crack open. I've only played this a few times, so it's not. Not huge, not needed, but destroy target artifact enchantment. Create a treasure token. There's a couple token doubles in here. You can get uh, net you some extra mana when you need it. Uh, commit. This is a great card. Put target spell or non land permanent into their owner's library. So this is going to remove a spell, put it on their owner's library. But the big thing you need it for is the aftermath. Fun thing about this is you don't always have to play commit. You can uh, very likely discard this and be able to play Memory. Each player shuffles his or her hand and Graveyard into his or her library, then draw seven cards. Again, four players this is going to give you 21 snakes. It's good. This can be a game winner, but I like to use it as creature removal. Sacrifice creature, deal of damage, any target. Uh, something big's coming at you can't block it but then you can sack your snakes and deal some damage or you can finish games with it sometimes broken bond what's nice about this it also ramps you now here is the ways to protect Zyrus and also give haste uh, a very underplayed card here clout of the dominus it enchant creature will get shroud and haste uh, so it's a um, it's a good card. Not a lot of people play it. 
Guardian of Augmenter, newer card, commander gets plus two, plus two, and gains Hexproof. What's nice about this, one, you can get it out before your commander, but two, other than the Hexproof, when you give your commander plus two, plus two, that's gonna draw you two more cards, and it's gonna get you two more snakes. Big, Lightning Greaves, Staple, don't need to talk anymore. All right, so now we're getting the Haste Enablers. After ramp, this is the most important thing. You gotta, you wanna get your commander out and swinging right away. You also wanna get your snakes out and either swinging right away or, well, I'll show you later, one of the most terrific cards in this deck you want haste for. Uh, it's really a game winner, we'll get to it. So Fervor, creature you control have haste, beautiful. Fires of Yavimaya, creatures have haste. Also, if you already have another haste enabler out, you can sack it. You can give your commander plus two, plus two. Now you're drawing two more. Getting two more snakes. Ogre Battle Driver. Drawing two more. Giving two more snakes. Giving all your creatures haste. Samut. So this one gives you, gives all your creatures haste, but also minus one, and you give your commander another plus two, plus one. Drawing two more cards, making two more snakes. See what we're doing here? Now, here is my second favorite card in this deck, the Locust God. You're going to be drawing lots of cards. Your opponent's going to be drawing lots of cards. So, now also with your token doublers, you're making lots and lots of hasty insect creatures with flying. So these can be chump blockers, or at times you can just end opponent as soon as you get this card out, if you have the right cards on the battlefield. Uh... Great, great card, also very hard to remove because of that last ability. Cassetto. Now what's great about this card, you can get a lot of mana in this deck. So that green, blue target creature can be blocked. Also gets plus two, plus two because it's a snake. This is gonna get your commander through and give it plus two, plus two. This means you can Voltron your, your commander out uh, you can make it huge, hit somebody hard, get lots of snakes, draw lots of cards. It's just uh, a great card. These are my bombs. Uh, Perforos, get lots of snakes out, doing two damage to all your, all your opponent. This is a game ender right here. Great card. Warstorm Surge, same deal. Um, Warstorm Surge... Also play uh, can do creature or player, so you can start removing any uh, threats out there. So this also acts as removal. But when you get uh, certain cards, like let's see, coat of arms. Now you get 20 snakes out easily. Say 21 snakes out because you milled, because uh, you you wield the table. 21 snakes out. They're gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger, and that last snake's gonna hit for 21. Uh, to any player, 20 the one before that, you can easily get Warstorm Surge, Coat of Arms out, wheel the table, and win. Great ender. Uh, combined Crystal. I haven't got a chance to play this one much, but, I mean, who doesn't want Flying Snakes? That second ability is meh, but the fact that you can get this out early, create some, and all your snakes have Flying, uh, using them as chump blockers is the main reason I put it in here, but you can also send them through without being blocked. Here is another game winner. Uh, Psychic Corrosion. Who doesn't like to mill somebody for the win? It's just too much fun. When you draw a card, again, you'll be drawing lots of cards. Each opponent puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. If you can draw 50 cards, which again, not too hard to do in this deck, you win the game. Everyone else mills 50. Coat of Arms speaks for itself. You get 21 snakes out. They're all 21, 21s. And uh, they're hitting hard. Shared Animosity. Kind of the same deal, but they got to be attacking. But put lots of power on your snakes. Also, your commander is a snake. Get 21 of your snakes out, send in your commander for 24 damage, you're killing somebody. 
It's beautiful. Nationals altar. After you're done, sacrifice your snakes. You got lots of mana to play all them cards you're getting in your hand. Amazing card in this deck. A huge star, Curse of Opulence. Say you use those 21 snakes and you swing at somebody. Now you got 21 gold tokens. Or, if you got a token doubler out, now you got 42. And you're able to play every card in your hand. It's, it's fun. Big plays, lots of fun. And when someone tries to interrupt you, now you got the mana to use your counter spells. All works together. The best card in this deck, in my opinion. Cryptolith Right. Creatures you control. Tap. Add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Now all your hasty snakes are tapping for manas. You're drawing a bunch of cards. You're wheeling people, making more snakes, making more manas to tap to make more snakes, more mana, cast more spells. This is a game ender right here. Every time I get this out, there's probably a 50% chance I'm going to win. Uh, it's beautiful. Xenagos. This is another get 21 snakes out. And now you're using this plus one. Now you got tons of mana. Cast them cards. Not as good because you don't get blue with it. But hey. Hopefully you're going to get lots of artifacts. Or mana ramp. That you can use and tap and fix your mana up. Great card. Mirage Mirror. Now we're getting to the fun stuff. Now Mirage Mirror and Mirror may kind of do the same thing. They're able to copy artifacts, enchantments. Mirage Mirror is a little better. It can copy uh, creatures as well. But the main reason I put these two in here is for Smothering Tithe. There's always going to be a Smothering Tithe on the table, at least in my play group. Mirage Mirror is going to copy that, even though it costs two mana. Uh, you're going to mill somebody, and you're going to get, again, if you're milling the table, you're getting 21 tokens for two mana, three mana to put it on the board. It is worth it. Mirror made the same thing, or you can copy one of your token doublers um, or an artifact if you need mana fixing. It's, it's very versatile. Also, it gets to... Uh, copy anything that your opponents control if you want. So it also gets to play with the table, and I like to play off of other people's cards. All right, now here comes the fun part. The windfalls. The Magus of the Wheels. The ultimate Whirlpool Warrior. Not as good because that top, uh, where you have to lose your hand when you play it so you can't always play it early but you have this on the board people really don't think about it one mana to sack it wheel the table and it's amazing but also who doesn't like the ultimate warrior i play his music when i play this card molten psyche now this one this one you can draw a lot but usually you're drawing seven if you're using it right and then, of course, the classic Jace's Archivist. Now, there's a decent chance I'm going to have more than seven cards in my hand. So you can make people draw 10, 20, 30 cards, no problem. Great card. So those are the wheels. Here are ways to get your opponents to kind of tempt them or make them draw extra cards. Wheel of Ideas. Beginning of their upkeep, draw an car, extra card. Burning Inquiry, everyone draws three cards to start. It's three cards at random. It's a little, a little more risky, but you also have a chance to get rid of some, some good gas in someone else's uh, hand. Really like it. Edric, he's actually kind of give or take with me. Gives, gives them more control than I like, but there he is. He's a classic. You got to have him. Words of Wisdom, you draw two cards. Everyone else draws a card. You know, two mana, get three snakes, and draw two cards. It's a no-brainer. Humble Defector. This is where the group hug comes in. You draw two cards, you give it to someone to make a little friend. And, uh, you know, either they're going to draw two cards and give it to somebody else who's going to draw two cards. Because people are greedy. It's going to happen. So you're just making snakes or gives it back to you and you get to draw two cards. 
tons of value with this pin and prosperity this one's really fun because you really find out what kind of table you have you give it to a friend make some deals draw cards put lands out of your hand onto the battlefield which you're always going to have because you're always drawing cards it makes sense now this is a big game ender you have any of those big uh cripple with rights or uh any of the big uh, mana cars that I talked about earlier. You sack all your tokens, or you tap them all, and as long as you got that red and blue, you're going to deal damage to somebody else, and you're going to have them draw 30, 40, 50 cards. You can mill them out this way, or you can just make a ton of snakes this way. I mean... It, or you can kill one of yours and you can draw a bunch. And if you have any way to mill them, then you're going to win that way. This is a game ender right here. More ways. Each player draws extra cards on the draw step. And that Curse of Verbosity. This is another tempting card. You put it on a player you don't like. Every time he's attacked, you get to draw cards. They get to draw cards. As long as your commander's out, you're making snakes. Everyone's having fun. Vision schemes. Each player draws two cards. Another great way to get six snakes and draw two cards for two mana. Easy. Scribing. This is another game winner right here. Ladies and gentlemen, each player draws X cards. Again, you're able to make tons of mana in this deck. Everyone's drawing lots of cards. You get to choose how much they're drawing, so easy way to win. Multiple different ways. Temple Bell, each player draws a card, you get to do it. At the end of the person in front of you's turn, they don't get to use their cards, you do, you get the snakes. They're no longer summoning sick, it's beautiful. Heartwood Storyteller, when a player casts a non-creature spell, each of that player's opponents may draw a card. This is a great way to, uh, in EDH, get a lot of card draw, a lot of snakes. Everyone's drawing cards. Everyone's happy, and you're making snakes and drawing cards. Now, here's two cards that you don't need in this deck. I think wheels are actually better than token doublers, but there's a few different things I already showed you why token doublers are, are strong. Uh, so I just put Parallel Lives and Adrix and Nev. Uh, doubling season, a little too pricey. I don't do anything with 1-1s. One doesn't need to be in here. Um, and so these were the two that I chose. This one's also nice because you get it out a little earlier. You can swing with it on someone who's cursed. It has multiple uses, but there you go. That is my Zyrus, the Writhing Storm deck list. Kind of the reason why I put each of those cards in there. This isn't a deck list you're going to find anywhere else. Um, you're going to see a lot of similar cards, but if you're wanting to build them, want to have a lot of fun, have some stake, have some sizzle, huge plays, turn three, turn four, turn five, big plays, and still have a chance to win, this is uh, this might might be my best deck. We'll see the more that I play it. But anyway, so many questions you have, I'm glad to talk to you about it on the internet, do all the things you're supposed to do, and hope you enjoyed the video.